Hey guys, so the videos are going to be a little bit different from here on out. Yes, very different. Every video from here on out is going to be... It's going to have a goth song in the background. Obviously, for copyright reasons, I don't want to have it so that it's just pure silence or whatever. It's just going to progress through. And hopefully I'll only have to play the songs once, but it'll be one song. And for each one that I do, I'm going to educate you on the origins and so on and so forth, or at least as much as I can give. So I figured that for today I wanted to start off actually very simple and very weird <laughs> by starting with the Goth Kid song from South Park. Yep, I went there. It's actually a really interesting thing. Trey Parker and Matt Stone, the creators of South Park, they were really into, well actually they still are, very interested in the band The Cure. It is a popular goth rock band, one of the like benchmarks for the goth subculture it's one of the earliest so when they made their soundtrack for their goth kids in the series they wanted to make something that sounded like it would be similar to something that the cure would make it's actually kind of indicative of their song the forest or a forest sorry it's a that song is a great one as well so if i need to i could probably splice that song in as well but i want to stick with the one that's created for the series, the South Park series, because it sounds similar and it is just a great track. It sounds amazing. I love it. I don't care. Honestly, if I was at a goth club and that thing played, I'd be dancing to it. Guaranteed. <laughs> anyway, on to the video. Remember that time 10 months ago when I said that I would have a video made that week? Oops. <laughs> hey guys, it's Valeria Absinthe back again. Yay! <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I apologize for dropping off like that. A lot of things happened. I mean, I guess for me to start off, it was near the end of 2019 where a massive wave of depression hit me. Part of it was due to stress related to my job. I was in a store that was hell. <laughs> it was complete and utter hell for me. I was pretty much berated and told that I wasn't good enough like every week and even if something wasn't my fault they'd blame me and be like oh well why is this like this and they would have all these expectations for me that I couldn't complete like no human could but they expected me to they expected me to be way better than everybody else in the building while a lot of the people in that building got babied and got away with being whiny lazy painfully slow and otherwise inept at the job but anyway so there was that, there was just the general depression where I just kind of started questioning who, who I was, what my point was, or for existing was, and I even stopped doing makeup at that point. Like, I wouldn't even practice at home or anything like that, I just, I just wouldn't do anything. I was too lethargic and all this stuff, and obviously then 2020 happened, we had the issue of the pandemic, everyone knows how that went. I mean, everyone had their own flavor of tragic for that. And then... Things kind of started to improve a little bit. In August, I eventually got transferred to a different store. I preferred it a lot better. They're a lot nicer. They're a, little, a lot more lenient on stuff. The depression did end up lifting a bit, which is actually my makeup again. <laughs> Things improved enough for me to be willing to do this, and for the most part, I'm back. I can explain more on that kind of stuff later, if desired, but I think that's really all that needs to be mentioned here. So, with all, be all that being said, let's get into the actual video. <laughs> As people already know, I am goth. I have been goth for a while. Kind, In a sense, I kind of always was goth, but it's a really hard thing for me to explain right now, especially since that's not the topic of the video. I will elaborate more in a future video, but yes, I have been goth for quite a while, and as such, I've experienced some kind of interesting things. The weird part about that is that all of it's been online. Yeah, where I live in Canada, I actually barely see even any alternative people, let alone goth people. Uh, you really only see that kind of thing sometimes in Halloween. I, I don't know, maybe somewhere in the city there is a collective of people that do like express themselves in a goth format and like visually look alternative and all that kind of stuff. But as for me personally, with where I am and with how difficult it is for me to travel around right now, I haven't seen anything like that. And from my knowledge, we don't even really have any alternative clubs or anything that caters to goth. We had a goth store at one point, it was called Sanctuary. They closed like late 2019. I didn't know this though. I only found out late last year. <laughs> like probably, I'm just like, no, why would you do this to me? <laughs> 
So anyway, yeah, aside from that, there was really nothing. I just don't see these kind of things, so... Yeah, and then the people that see me as I am and everything, they either are fine with it or they just don't care. They just... People don't interact with me that much in real life. <laughs> Yeah, so basically a lot of my experience with the weird stereotypes and all that kind of stuff isn't even personally directed to me. I, like, I've never seen anyone actually direct or come directly to me about something aside from like asking about like, oh, I heard that this kind of fashion thing is referred to this type of goth. Is it true? I had to correct that and so on. Ta-da! That being said, I have seen different stories from a whole bunch of different people on like weird things that they've seen, some of the stereotypes that they've encountered, and I actually wrote them down to debunk them today. For the most part, before I get into this, I wanted to outline one pretty big opinion of mine. It might be an unpopular opinion, I actually have no idea, but it is of my opinion that even with all these stereotypes being in existence, if you're looking at the more well-known ones and the kind of obvious ones that people are probably already thinking of right now, there is a high chance that every single goth person does represent at least one of these. It is not to say that every single goth represents that one point, or that we represent all of them. There is a reason they are still stereotypes. They are still based on false information and superstition and so on and so forth. But there is at least one or a small collection of goth people in the community that are one of these stereotypes. Mainly by coincidence. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> just don't think that every... Like, just don't... Like, what, what I'm gonna read... Don't think that it signifies every single goth in the community, because that's really just discrediting us. It's not the basis of who we are, it's something a bit more important than this, so without further ado, let's go! Oh, and um, I did have one thing where I found it like a Christian pamphlet thing that was apparently mailed about in this one town that listed a bunch of like fucking Willy Wonka shit, and I want to, like I will let you know when that kind of stuff happens. It is hilarious, it is dumb, and it is- and some of it is applicable to almost everything that is not hardcore crazy Christian shit. Yeah. Anyway, off we go! Goths are Satanists. No. I'm not a Satanist. I know a lot of other people that are not Satanists. I know a lot of people that don't even like the term. So, like... There's a lot of people that actually get annoyed when you immediately jump to that conclusion. Goth does not have a religion. It does not fall under one set religion. Goth is based on whatever you want. Well, in terms of like the visual aesthetic and what you believe in, we don't really care about that part. So we have goth people in- yes, there are goth people in the community that are Satanists, and will also be willing to argue with you about what Satanism actually is, because even the Satanist religion is often misinterpreted. I wouldn't know, I'm not into it, I don't plan to be into it personally, but if you're one of them, that's fine. But there are also Christian Goths. Yes, they exist. There is Jewish Goths, there is Muslim Goths, there's Atheist Goths, there's Agnostic Goths, there's Wiccan Goths. Like, it doesn't matter. Whatever your faith is, as long as you are not harming anybody with it, you can be goth if you want. So yeah, again, it's kind of not the point. Goths do drugs. Maybe, but uh, not all of us do. Even if like the majority somehow do drugs, I, I highly doubt it. There's a misconception with that, which is probably why the stereotype exists, but I'm no less goth just because I don't do drugs. I have never done drugs. I don't have the interest. So that and, I mean, on what scale are you really looking at? Are you looking at just like the illegal shit or do prescription drugs also count as doing drugs? Because then there's a whole slew of other people that also technically do drugs. Like, it's because we look different, isn't it? It's because we, cho we, cho we choose to look out there, or at least some of us do. Some of us prefer the minimalistic approach and that's perfectly fine, but it's because of the look, right? Like, this thing seems too spooky for you guys, and so you're just like, oh yeah, you totally do drugs, that's why you look like that. No! I look this way because, uh, I think I look beautiful this way. I am happy looking this way. This is who I am. But there's a lot more to my personality, trust me. You should try getting to know people before you judge them. Next point, 
Goths are depressed slash suicidal and or cut themselves. Honestly, I'm just gonna make this one pretty brief. No, some of us have it. Like some of us have depression, depression issues. I certainly do. I've already mentioned that in the beginning. But aside from that, no. Goths are in a cult of some kind. Um... Goths kind of just like to look dramatic sometimes. And we don't need to be in a cult. In fact, I assure you, probably most of us aren't in one. Goths only wear black. Guilty. <laughs> um, this is not 100% the case. Goth fashion typically does have like primarily black. Some people do only black, depending on how they wish to present themselves. But there's a lot of different goth fashion out there romantic, Victorian, um, cyber goth, that kind of stuff that incorporates color as well. And if you're looking at something like, for example, cyber goth, a lot of color gets incorporated, sometimes even ignoring black. It can happen. It color doesn't really matter with goth. It really doesn't. But in my case, because I personally look better in black primarily, that's what I stick with, but you can't be goth if you're happy or nice. You're allowed to have a personality, you know? <laughs> like, you're allowed to be happy, you're allowed to smile, and I realize that a lot of the music can be dark and broody and everything, but that's... It doesn't mean we have to behave that way. The music is not really indicative of our personalities. <laughs> Just the fucking history of the subculture, god. All goths listen to metal or similar genres. Personally, I... I don't really listen to metal myself, or at least I don't know how much of this stuff I listen to as being metal. I don't pay attention to that detail, actually. But no. If you wanted to make this weird stereotype have some kind of credibility, you probably should have just said, uh, all goths listen to goth rock. No. Just, just no. You guys are silly. That's just a silly thing. Goths think they're vampires. I think it depends on who you're looking at. Because there are a couple, like, goth YouTubers that kind of constantly try and pass that kind of information off or consistently joke about it to the point where the less educated might think that by default. But goths are aware of the fact that they're not vampires. We just think that they're cool. And we're allowed to think that they're cool. There's a couple people I know about that actually don't like vampires and are actually afraid of vampires and of like the blood factor and so on and so forth. So debunked right there. <laughs> uh, all goths practice magic. No, they really don't. I mean, I can't prove this, but there's probably some goth people out there that aren't really even too sure how to execute a spell. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I practice magic, yes, because I'm Wiccan, and I was Wiccan before I even discovered that the goth subculture was what it was, and decided, yeah, I'm gonna just dive headfirst into it, as I often do when I get interested in really anything, so. Goth is a phase you grow out of. Um... For some people, goth is more than a phase. For some people, goth is basically their entire fucking identity and what makes them who they are. If they were to step out of that, they would stop being themselves. They would stop being who they are, which means they'd be trying to cater to somebody else, in which case, stop. We are about being ourselves and everything. As long as you're not being a pretentious dick to people actually harming others and everything, so... Yeah, um... I mean, yes, some people grow out of the of the subculture. Not because of it being a phase, I don't think. Like, some- they might mistake it as being a phase, but I think it's more that they go into it thinking that it's interesting and that it might be part of their identity, and then kind of developing to find out that maybe they don't fit in as well as they thought that they did, maybe it just wasn't quite for them and they just peacefully leave. It doesn't mean that they'd hate the uh, subculture or whatever the case may be, but goths hate everything. I don't think we'd go outside or do anything 
if we hated everything. If we hated everything, then we'd be sad and miserable fucking people. <laughs> we have many interests. Some of it within the subculture and some of it vastly out of it. And do you guys try to get to know people before you make up these stereotypes? Is, is this what's going on? Because this is crazy. Everything that I've been reading so far is fucking crazy. And I'm not even at the point that I've read the actual really crazy stuff yet. We are allowed to like things and still be God. One of my favorite things is fucking Monster High. Before they revamped it and ruined everything and then, I mean, it's cancelled now anyway, so... Thanks, Mattel. You guys are... You guys catered to the wrong people. Thanks. Um... There's a point where I like My Little Pony. I like Disney movies. A bunch of Disney movies. Like... I don't know what favorite that I want to mention right now, because I, I like too many of them. Like... <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's a couple, like... Spooky, spooky, kind of gothy like movies that I like. I do like Edward Scissorhands. I like The Addams Family. And if you don't like The Addams Family, what's matter? What's the matter with you people? Just kidding. No. <laughs> no, you're allowed to not like it if you just don't. Don't be a dick about it. But Nightmare Before Christmas, it's a fucking classic. I like Coraline. I like The Corpse Bride. I mean, they're good movies. <laughs> But I'm allowed to like the lighter stuff too, and the cute stuff, and one of my absolute favorite movies is Mouse Hunt and Babe. They're weird movies, they're kind of dumb at points, but I don't care. They were my childhood. <laughs> but anyway, we're allowed to like things. It's not a problem. Goth, emo, and scene are the same. I only have one word for that. No. Moving on. Goths are obsessed with death. Not really, actually. I mean, sometimes death does get brought into a conversation topic, and yes, there's like motifs of that for some people for like photo shoots, for like example, like taking pictures in a graveyard or communicate, trying to communicate with the dead or something like that, depending on who you're looking at. But honestly, I don't see it actively discussed from my personal experience. Maybe I'm not in the right niche of goth people that do talk about that. I wouldn't know. I don't have any real life friends, so... And for the most part, I don't have that many online friends either, and especially not goth ones. I don't think I have a single goth friend right now. I wouldn't know. I'm not the kind of person to pressure into that kind of thing. I'm not the kind of person to care otherwise. All goths are loners! Right now, this one is. <laughs> Again, I don't have real-life friends, um, I've had some bad luck with, uh, trying to get real-life friends. They only like other goths. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. I haven't had a single friend who has been full-on goth. At least, not to my knowledge, unless that is one aspect that they decide to hide from me for some weird reason. Because I'm always transparent about being goth. That's just how it is. It's who I am. So, I debunked that right there, but, I mean, yeah, there's some goth people out there that maybe only have goth friends, but maybe that's just because that's the only people that want to get to know them and the only people they connect with. Like, sometimes that factor is true, but only because society makes it true. Because nobody, like, no, none of these normal people, I use that, like, like, heavy emphasis on the normal thing. Like, what the fuck is normal at this point? Like, I feel that normal should be just you being yourself and finding the people that share your kind of personality or at least like your personality enough to want to be near you. It shouldn't be about what you look like or what you associate as. Come on. Come on, people. Let's see. They're all into kink slash fetish. Um... I know a lot of people who are not only not into it, but in some cases are actually fucking sickened by it. Which is personally fine, so long as you don't uh, mock the people who are into it. Like me. <laughs> yes, I am one of these people, so I'm proving my opinion right now by indicating that I do represent this. 
I mean, I've already proven it once or twice already, but it's just a set of interests that someone can have. It, it's not a goth thing. It's not a requirement to be goth. It is it's not goth. It's just... Just a thing. The only like the dark side. This is actually... This is bullshit. <laughs> it really is. I'm actually going to... If I can find the link. I want to read a certain quote just to kind of describe something. Mainly around the goth music, but it kind of extends towards a stereotype. Goth music, in all its varied forms, can be described in many ways. It is usually described with a characteristic lack of imagination, as being morbidly obsessed with death, as being dark, somber, or depressing descriptions, which show a complete misunderstanding of the genre. Goth music, to those who are willing to listen to it rather than merely hear the physical sounds which are transmitted, is full of passion, majesty, beauty, mysticism, and mystery, terror, violence, pain, love, imagination, eroticism, horror, euphoria, truth, evil, life, madness, and the irrational. Goth music tends to be described by ones who understand or who misunderstand it in terms of its dark side. It is rarely described in terms of its positive side, but should be described in terms of a balance between both dark and light, positive and negative. At its height, it can be so powerful that it transcends description. That quote was by Andrew Faraday, and it basically kind of sums up just how false the stereotype is. Yes, he's referring mainly to the music, but I'm going to refer to it as a whole. There's a balance. Yes, we kind of look at some of the dark elements. Yes, there's a bits of like this morbid, the depressed, the death imagery, and so on and so forth. But if you look at it as, uh, on the positive side as well, there's the mystery, there's beauty, there's the passion, the love, and all of that. And it's basically all of those put together. Goth it represents a kind of balance between both of that, and it stems from the music. The appearance is more of a bonus. It's not really the basis of the subculture. It's just that because we opt for the darker colors and the more kind of brooding kind of thing that people see it as just that. They're not seeing the other side of the coin. They're not seeing the different types that are out there. They're not seeing... It's almost like reading in between the lines here that you kind of need to do to see the different... Like, if you see, like, for example, the word black to represent our subculture and the main color that we go for, you gotta read in between that to see all the different colors inside, if that makes sense. It's a weird analogy, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not good at this. <laughs> But the way that I see it, yes, I do darker, like for me personally, yes, I do darker colors. Yes, I wear mostly black. But get to know me. I have a much more colorful personality than that. Usually what I've told people is I don't need color in my wardrobe. I have the personality to go for it. It more than makes up for it. Get to know me, man. It's not just about the dark. Just because we wear a lot of the darker colors, or that a lot of us do, there, there's a lot more to it than that. You, get, you just need to kind of broaden your mind and look at that, and especially listen to the music and the emotion that kind of comes from it, and the passion, and it's incredible. It really is beautiful if you look at it. You really need to. Like, you don't have to be part of the subculture. You don't have to all of a sudden, like, I'm not trying to convert anyone to being goth. If you want to be goth, go ahead. If you don't want to, don't. But don't pass judgments on us without understanding us first. Please. <laughs> the only shop at Hot Topic, Killstar, etc. No, that is wrong. A lot of us can't even fucking afford those brands. Example. They don't cater to the plus size people like my u.s size is extra large pushing to 1x right now like on top of that stuff being ludicrously expensive for me to the point where i can barely buy any of that stuff like all of their best stuff that i'm most interested in will never come in my size the only thing that i found in my size that was similar was like the killstar sorceress dress i'll put it on the screen like that size is 2x and 
even that was a little bit tricky for me to properly fit in. Like, the problems with my body, you can see quite clearly with that. Um, I mainly bought it because I like the hood and the super crazy long sleeves, even though my cats attack them. <laughs> anyway. Oh, gosh. So, like, ele blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Emily the Strange. Sorry, guys, I'm become unable to speak English. <laughs> anyway, yeah, all goths like Emily the Strange. And honestly, if that was something that ever ended up being true, I don't see the problem. It is just a fucking book that people are allowed to read. And honestly, I personally, if you haven't read it, I personally recommend that you do. It's actually really interesting. It's a really interesting read. The character Emily is actually kind of funny, in my opinion. I mean, if you don't like it, that's fine. Just don't be a dick about it. <laughs> they won't or can't get a normal job. I don't know, I've seen a lot of people that are part of the goth subculture that are like fucking accountants and stuff like that. What qualifies as a normal job? Like a secretary or... I already mentioned the accountant thing, like... What is a normal job? We can be whatever the fuck we want to be. We can be cashiers. We can be the store manager in a business or something. And I stock overnight at a goddamn Walmart. I, I Maybe that doesn't count as normal because Walmart can be a fucking dumpster fire at times, but it's normal enough, I guess. And it's still a job. I still get an income. Like, you kind of need the jobs. <laughs> like, it doesn't really matter what kind of job it is. I've seen normal looking people have more abnormal jobs than the fucking goth people. So get over yourselves, man. Goths are sociopaths. Mm, yeah. Ah, uh, these two points. I'm gonna read them both together. They, and this is actually a problem in the community as a whole. Uh, yes, we seem to have somehow ascended to the plane of stereotyping ourselves, and it's a tragedy. You aren't goth if you don't look the part. And you can't be goth if you don't like goth rock. Examples. The Cure. Bauhaus. Susie and the Banshees, Sisters of Mercy. I would like to mention now, I can't physically show. I can take a picture if I need to, though, and plant it on the screen, but I misspelled Susie's name. And this is not the first time that I did it. I used to talk to people about this stuff before, and even then, I continued to misspell it, and I, I feel ashamed. But anyway, I don't know why we descended to a plane where we have to stereotype ourselves and why some people felt the need to gatekeep us in our own community. It is preposterous. So I'm gonna break this down. The appearance does not matter. You can look however the fuck you want and still have a higher chance of being goth than people who look even more dramatic than I do. You do not need to look goth to be goth. You've never needed to look goth to be goth. The only people that are saying that are trying to gatekeep the subculture and potentially don't even have a fucking clue about it. Just ignore them. They're not worth your time. Find better people. Find more intelligent people. To get back into the music. The music is the core of the subculture, and I do personally think that you need to know at least a little bit of goth rock to be goth. But the more important thing is to know its history and to at least like the music. Those are the only real requirements. So educate yourself with the history and with the music. You don't need to fo focus on just one genre. Do you realize how many genres there are? There are subgenres within the subgenres of goth music. There is, there's so many things. I don't want to get too far into it. I, I will bring all these subgenres up later, like in a different video. There, there's so much out there that fit under the umbrella of goth music. You are bound to find something that you like. Guaranteed, there's at least something in there for you. Like, for me personally, I actually, for the most part, am not the biggest fan of goth rock. Yes, I know the bands. Yes, there's a couple songs from said bands that I do like. Um, like for Sisters of Mercy, I like Temple of Love, and so on and so forth. I don't want to get too far into it, but Goth rock is just one aspect. Yes, you should know about it. Yes, you should at least, like, if you can't make yourself like it, you need to at least appreciate it and respect that that's where the subculture came from. 
But no, you do not need to just like goth rock to be a goth person. Okay, here's here's a section that came from the pamphlet, and I'm just gonna rapid fire all of these just because they're weird. And basically what the pamphlet was, someone mentioned that like members of this weird Christian church thing went door to door with these pamphlets that was basically warning people about what signs to look for if your child was going was turning goth or was a goth. And when you read some of the stuff that's there, it's like, there's a lot of normal ass fucking people that also have these traits. Does that mean they're suddenly goth? What? <laughs> so, it's great. I, I gotta read this. You, you, you'll love it. It doesn't matter who you are. It's gonna be funny. Trust me. Goth people have piercings and or tattoos. Goth people complain of boredom. Uh, how about hashtag 2020? Everybody was doing that, so. Sleeps too much or too little. Out at night and hates the sun. If I recall correctly, a lot of goth clubs, or a lot of clubs in general, happen at night. They're not doing them during the day, usually. But I wouldn't know about any of that. I d haven't really been to clubs. I've been to a club once, several years ago. And it was on Halloween. That was the end of it. I never had another, another experience like that, so anyway. Troublemakers are against authority. Goths hang out in graveyards. They eat too much or too little. They eat goth-related foods. Example, Count Chocula. <laughs> oh, I don't want to cry. <laughs> uh, I didn't know there were foods that were listed as being goth. Thanks, crazy ch Christian people. Thanks. Fucking Count Chocula. I don't really even care for Count Chocula. It's bland as shit. I like- you know what I really like that's like actual like chocolate related stuff? Like those- it's like the Cinnamon Toast Crunch thing, but they made like a chocolate version. That shit's delicious. I love those. And those Oreo O's, those are- those are my cho chocolatey loves. I would go for those over like anything Count Chocula any day. Count Chocula is really fucking boring. Even more boring was like Frankenberry. But anyway. Drinks blood or expresses an interest in it. watches cable TV or other corrupt media. And last I checked, they use these corrupt medias to make Christian programming. So... Plays video games containing violence or RP nature, so if you like Final Fantasy, congrats, you're a goth! And that's what the fuck this thing means. Uses internet excessively. 2020, a lot of people were doing that. Makes satanic symbols and or headbangs to music. Some people just like doing the headbanging thing, come on. I mean, I can't do it because it gives me a massive headache, but... Dances to music provocatively. These fucking things, man. Is homosexual and or bisexual. Well, I guess that means I'm in the clear for being considered a goth person because I'm neither of those things. I'm a demisexual pansexual, which is a completely different aspect. But I guess because I have a stronger interest in women than men these days. This is part of why I'm against like Christianity for the most part. For me personally, I might add, if you're part of it, that's fine. As long as you're not like these weird crazy people that say that you can't even be a certain sexuality without being considered sinful. And there are people out there that are Christian and are just like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. So, anyway. Pursues dangerous religions such as Satanism, Scientology, philosophy, paganism, Wicca, Hinduism, and Buddhism. So basically, according to this pamphlet, if they are anything other than Christian, your kid is a goth. Okay. Wears pins, stickers, etc. containing various goth phrases, examples. I'm so goth I'm dead. Woe is me, and so on. That's the end of that, and it's all dumb. <laughs> it really, it really is. So, why do these stereotypes exist? Well, it's actually quite simple. Superstition, extremist religion, and the media. Most importantly, it's the media. Back in the day, they saw these people that were all dark and dramatic and were happy to show that kind of stuff, and they assume that we're just fucked up people and there are some people that looked the part but kind of weren't the part and the media would go for those people and talk with them because 
that would perpetuate the stereotype. It would propel the misconceptions and all that. So yeah, and then like the people that don't know any better and don't look into things before uh, making judgments, they look at that and like, well, yeah, that has to be true. These goth people are crazy. They're bad people. And I implore you guys to, to stop. The media has this bad habit of only focusing on the negative aspects and falsifying as much information as possible just to stir up people. And we should know better by now. We should know that this is the case. Media does not care about putting in facts. These superstitious people who think that just because we look a certain way that we have to be like these horrible, horrible people, they don't care about what the actual history is or anything. They don't want to hear that information. They don't want to listen to any goth person that is in the community and is able to say that, yeah, this is crazy. They're going to go for fucking Jimbo over there who doesn't know anything. Like, yeah, Satan, woohoo, and all this other kind of stuff. And it's like, no, <laughs> try getting to know something before you make judgments. It's not hard, especially these days. I mean, yeah, back then it was more like word of mouth and everything, and if the media tried and everything, then we wouldn't have the kind of problems that we have now. It's still considered almost unacceptable to be goth these days and everything. It's kind of tragic, but like these days, we're in a time where we can Google anything. We can look into this stuff. We can find these people and bring it about. Like, and I, I implore that you do so. Don't try converting people, because that's just gonna make things worse. But if they don't understand something, and they're willing to listen, just educate them. Just tell them, this is how it is, this is how it always has been. We're not the kind of people that they keep trying to push us towards. Like, it, it's really unfortunate that even these days, we still have people that are technically one of us. They share, they essentially share our hearts, but are afraid to show that because of how the media portrays it and they're worried about being bullied and all this other kind of stuff and you shouldn't be scared to be yourself. They shouldn't make people scared of themselves. It's just not fun. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's it's really hard for me to properly vocalize. There's so many other people that have probably said it better than I do, but the stereotypes mainly only exist because superstitious people, the dickheads that propel the problems and just the media that does not care enough to actually show what it really is for us so you know so with that being said i think that's really all i have if you've heard of any other weird stereotypes or whatever list them below if you found this interesting you know like comment whatever subscribe if you are interested i do plan on posting a bunch more goth related videos but i want to mention right away that goth content will not be the bulk of my channel. I still don't really fully know what kind of uh, content I want to stick to, but I do want to do educational stuff for sure, like uh, mainly for what I'm interested in. I, I eventually do plan on doing videos regarding Wicca and all that, but I want to go through all that shit first before I start talking about it because I don't want to piss people off. But yeah, either way, goth content will not be all I have. There will be Wicca content at some point. I will probably review certain movies or games or whatever at cer certain points if I can manage it. My recording setup is completely fucking abysmal right now, so I can't go too crazy right now, but honestly, if you just want to hear me gab about certain things, tune in. <laughs> It'll hopefully be a fun time. I actually, I do really want to make sure that this community stays positive and that even if we don't agree with this, all the same opinions or whatever the case may be, that we can, you know, politely indicate why we believe a certain thing differently than someone else or whatever, and then essentially still be friends, <laughs> if that makes sense. So anyway, that's all I got. So 